Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord, and uh, he keeps keeping us. He's our Lord and Savior who resurrected from the dead. Pray the Lord, brethren, and welcome. We thank God for every opportunity God gives us. And we look at the, the restoration of a man called Peter. He speaks greatly about the generations that were at his time. And Simon Peter, the man that we're going to talk about, speaks multitudes for us who are living today. Remember, in a very short while, we have just celebrated Jesus' resurrection from the dead. And I have said it before, I say it again, at the center of our faith is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, after Jesus rose from the dead, there were things that he did that remained, that remained a yardstick for us as Christians who live today. And remember, Christianity has been around for over 2,000 years. And the Lord Jesus Christ still speaks to you and to me. The resurrected Lord still speaks his message. And so after his resurrection, like we have already mentioned, like we already know, Jesus spent 40 days on earth. And he was doing the work of restoring people that had lost hope, including Thomas, who was the doubter. And we have already explained a few things about Thomas the doubter. And now we speak a few things about the man, Simon Peter. One morning, Jesus appears to them. The resurrected Lord Jesus Christ appears to them. And he speaks a few words there that remained a milestone for the church. And now, this session, we talk about him challenging Simon Peter, the man that had denied Jesus Christ three times. One time I don't know him, another time I don't know him, and third time I do not know the man. Now, at breakfast, at the seashore, at the beach, Jesus appears and he does the restoration work. And from the Bible, we read John chapter 21, and the verses are 15, following, following. But let me just lay the foundation of the few verses that we're going to think about in the next few moments. That after breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter a question. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? These, Jesus was referring to the other apostles, of course, the other disciples, including, of course, the women that had seen the resurrected Lord. Now, Simon Peter answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus gave him an assignment, then feed my lambs. That's the assignment, a question with an assignment. Jesus repeated the question in verse 16, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter responded and said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Assignment, then take care of my sheep. That's by the Lord Jesus Christ saying. A third time in verse 17, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question the third time. And he said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Assignment again. Then feed my sheep. Now, you will read on, continue on and read. But our message that comes from this man, the two characters, our Lord Jesus Christ and Simon Peter, these were personal questions. Jesus poses to Simon Peter personal questions. They are the same. And theologians will explain what each of them will mean. But let me just bring this out. Jesus asks Peter three times the same question. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? 
And after every response, Jesus gives Simon Peter the responsibility. Look after my sheep. Feed my sheep. Take care of my lambs. Now, friends, this was just after a meal. Now, Jesus is moving very fast. One of the things that he had to do in the 40 days was to restore, to give another chance to the denier. Simon Peter had denied Jesus Christ three times, and Jesus faces Simon Peter three times with a question which, at the end, Simon Peter felt hurt because Jesus had asked him three times. Now, he had to put back that he had lost. The faith that he had lost, every time that he said, I don't know him, I don't know him, I don't know him, he had to repeat, I love you, I love you, I love you. So friends, the message that comes very, very vividly here is kind of restoration, but also grounding Peter, meaning that can make him firmer and stronger because of the pillar of the church. Remember, he is the one that the Lord Jesus Christ had mentioned, I give you the keys of the kingdom. And so he was the foundation of the church. And so this man who was very, very eloquent, he was the one who was the lead person among the 12, he would be the one to very quick responding to things. He seemed like he was a team leader of the remaining. And so every question he would hurry to answer. But of course, the others also asked questions. They also responded to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he had to pay back three times. And in this session, Peter also had to face his own feelings. The feelings that he had had at the denial, he had to transfer them. He has to change them. And now proclaim, Lord Jesus Christ, I love you. And Jesus is asking whether he loves Jesus Christ more than these. And this is something that challenges us today, the church where we're face, facing lots of challenges, lots of denials in our lives, lots of backsliding. You know, it was sort of backsliding when Peter denied the Lord Jesus Christ and yet he was with him around. Another backsliding is in the same, same chapter 21 of John. He tells the remaining, we go back fishing because that was their trade. But now Jesus comes to restore him, to bring him back, to make him the pillar of the church. And so the assignment that he gives him is shepherding the church. So Jesus tells Peter to feed and take care of the sheep, to look after the, his people, the church, teaching them the truth and extending the same love to others. You know, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Jesus gives the assignment, go ye into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them what I have taught you and I will be with you up to the end of age. Now, from this, at the commissioning, Peter, the Lord Jesus Christ wanted to know that he was leaving a people that were strong enough to continue with the work of the church. And so it's the reason why we pride ourselves in the faith that we profess because we are not as orphans. The Lord Jesus Christ, he said, I'll be with you up to the end of age. But also he entrusts people, he entrusts us with the responsibility to look after one another. And so church, we are people that need to look after one another. Church leaders, bishops, pastors, Call them the house of clergy. Call them those that are in the places of responsibility in the church. The responsibility is look after my church. God is people, look after them. Now, Peter writes in his letters, exhorting leaders to be shepherds. He encourages parents, he encourages leaders to be shepherds of God is people. And he draws from this, take care of my people, of them, my sheep. Now God is people need to be looked after. And how do we do this? As I take to the finish of this sharing, the most important thing that I bring to you 
listener, my brother or sister watching and listening to this message is the message of restoration that we derive from John chapter 21 verse 15 following. And the questions that Jesus put to Peter and they are all about caring. And we are living in a world where care for one another is diminishing. People are, meant, are looking more for their own good. Whatever happens to my neighbor is none of my business. And that is a wrong, it's a wrong attribute, the wrong thing that we are saying to ourselves. But Jesus desires to take care. He was he assigned Simon Peter, take care, look after my sheep, look after my people, take care of my lambs. Now, how do we do that? As church, as leaders, and of course, I'm meaning even parents, a parent to a leader. Well, yes, whoever they are, whoever you are, you are a special person in God's, you know, in God's homestead, in God's household. One thing that actually we find ourselves talking about is praying for one another. Very, very important. Connecting the prayer. That's taking care. Now, as leaders, as shepherds, one other thing that we need to do is to look for the lost. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself gave parables of those things that were lost, and therefore taking care is to go looking for those that are lost. Jesus gives us the parable of the lost coin, gives us the parable of the lost sheep, and that's very, very critical, taking care of my sheep. And the Bible says that when the man finds his sheep, he carries it on his shoulders, goes home with it, celebrates with his neighbors. And Jesus says there is joy in heaven over one sinner that he repents. And so this is very, very important for us that actually as leaders, we are meant to look for, to get out of our comfort zones and go shepherding, looking for those that are lost, you know, helping those that are wounded. And of course, finding those that are lost and bring them back into the fold. The reason why in John 10, Jesus says, I am a good shepherd. Yes, a good shepherd. And a good shepherd looks for, takes care of uh, his sheep. And so praying for them, looking for them, and listening to them. And, and now these days, these times of technology, as leaders or as people in the household of the faith, take us all as people in the household of the faith, picking a phone and calling a brother. How are you, my brother? Pray the Lord. And you pray along with somebody. On phone is something that I have discovered. It's a treasure that we have at our fingertips. And because we may not have time to run about, to go, let me go, and people are busy, but picking a phone and calling and talking godly things, talking prayer, talking a word of encouragement, it's very, very critical. It's very, very important. So this is important, helping them in, in any way, pursuing love actions, speaking tenderly to one another, taking care of one another. And so in this world where we have denials, where we have hatred, where we have doubt, where we have, you know, people harm one another too much. We are called upon to take care of one another. It's very, very important to remove the cloud of of denial, to remove the cloud of harm, to remove the cloud of hitting one another, take care of one another. And so the message of this time that we are bringing my brother, my sister, as they tend to the finish is, take care of my sheep, take care, shepherd one another. And it is one of the things that Jesus had to do before he would depart back to heaven and leaving us doing his work. But he leaves this very, very important, very critical um, statements and asking Peter, do you love me more than this? It's a personal question. Do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, if you do, then shepherd, take care of one another. Let us take care of one another. In this sheepfold, in the church, in the fellowships, let us take, one, let us take care of one another. Even in the home, we are brothers and sisters, take care of one another. And this is a very, very important message. And Jesus Christ gave this message to us before we would go back to heaven. And he leaves it to you and me. May God bless you and watch over you as we take the position of Simon Peter. Because he's our big brother in the faith. He was talking with the Lord face to face. May you remain focused and take care of one another in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <music>